today we're going to be talking about everything I wish I knew before becoming a YouTuber. The first thing is to have a financial plan. YouTube just won't make money for the first few years. Like any business, it might fail. So you have to have a backup plan in how you're gonna make money. I see a lot of these videos being like, I wanna quit my nine to five job and become a YouTuber. But honestly, I think that's the dumbest idea unless your channel's already taking off. I made a plan of like how I was gonna make money in one year, how much I was gonna make, how I was gonna make it. And I pitched it to my parents to see if they would allow me to drop out of school. I basically told them I'd freelance, make websites, consult Instagram brands, and make income by doing that. And I was able to dedicate time to YouTube because I had that source of income. Unless you have a lot of savings or a sugar daddy, I really do recommend to not depend on YouTube in the first three years. I remember my first seven years of YouTube, I didn't make a single dollar because I was figuring out how to edit, how to pick, you know, a niche. And if you, on top of all of that, add pressure of making money, it's gonna be overwhelming and you're gonna make yourself quit. And I find that's the reason why it's so hard to start a YouTube channel today is because we're so focused on, you know, looking at money and success because everyone else is making money. Like the truth is most creators that you're like looking after don't make money from YouTube in the very beginning. Like, I don't give a fuck if they say they have a Rolls Royce. I know so many people that rent Lamborghinis and like have this image of being wealthy. But in reality, that money's not from YouTube. And it's just a false perception of like what the first beginnings of a creator journey looks like. The second thing that I wish I knew was to plan on making new friends because you're gonna most likely lose your current ones. I know that's pretty harsh and like, Jade, that sounds like really depressing. But the truth is, the people that you're friends with from kindergarten or high school or even college, most likely won't support your goals and will go down a different path. Being a YouTuber is essentially being self-employed. And if your friends are all employed, they might not understand, you know, what you're doing. And I remember for me, when I dropped out of school, every single one of my friends thought I was like dumb for taking a risk and I'm never gonna make any money. I think someone literally in school was like, Jade's like gonna end up homeless. Instead of listening to them, I tried to find a new group of people that supported me and I literally joined an Instagram engagement group. Now, if you guys know what an Instagram engagement group is, it's really cringy, but basically it's a group of like 10 or 20 people that like comment on each other. It's the dumbest thing, honestly, but it worked and I got motivated and I felt in a weird way, a sense of community. If you're able to join a creator house, I know they're expensive, but I like recently moved into a crypto creator house called Launch House. Anybody can apply. If you guys want, you guys can use my link below. It's in Beverly Hills. But I was really skeptical because I would say I've been a YouTuber for now 10 years, right? So I don't really need Launch House necessarily to start, but it was so beneficial to be in a house full of people that were content creators, entrepreneurs, founders. It was so fun and everyone was like fucking hilarious. And it was kind of expensive, but if you're able to like get a house with your friends, it doesn't have to be in Beverly Hills. Um, hopefully all of them are creators and just make shit and like do it for a month. It's so beneficial. And I think that like, it really gets you out of the bubble of people that don't believe in you and gets you into a new bubble of people that will motivate you and keep you going when things get tough. The third thing I wish I knew was when you start to make a dollar on YouTube, invest it 100% back into your channel. Don't buy designer shit. I know it's tempting. But I remember when I first got my first $100 check on YouTube, I reinvested it back into my channel and got an editor and used that money to pay her to edit videos and I could make more content. Now, it's not gonna always return immediately. Like, you know, if you put a hundred bucks in, you're gonna get 10,000. Sometimes you put a hundred dollars in and then you lose $20 because you're like going negative and then you make $200, right? Like sometimes it's not linear, but when you're a YouTuber, you really need to stop editing and work on ideas, concepts, producing more content. Because the more content you make, the more views you get, the more audiences you get, and it's not always linear, but it does help grow your revenue and then you can relax. Now, of course, I'm a huge proponent of self-care. Get yourself that Louis V bag, if that's your dream. But you need to get in a habit of like reinvesting back because it really trains you to spend on growing for the long term, not just the short term. My fourth thing I wish I knew was just take a fucking break. You need to be able to understand when it's a high season and you gotta grind it out and when it's a low season and it's time to take a break. Cause no 
fucking YouTuber or entrepreneur can grind 24 seven. I don't care if you watch Gary Vee. Just kidding, we love Gary. It's just like, you need to know when to take a break. And I personally took way too long before I like slowed down my uploads. Like it was awful. I would like be so fed up with myself if I didn't upload every single day because I was uploading daily. I know. And I think like, it's really important to at the same time, you know, invest all your money and be diligent. Don't beat yourself up if you take a break. So I have a therapist and I see her once a week because I'm Gen Z and anxious like everyone on Zerd. But um, she told me this like really interesting quote at one of our sessions and she's like, anything you're afraid of it happened in the past. You're not worried about it in the future. What does that mean? For example, I was so nervous to take a break from YouTube. Like if I take a break, my opportunity is going to be missed and I'm going to like wake up one day and have like no money and no YouTube channel, which is not true. Like if you sleep like an extra hour, you're going to be fine. What I was afraid about wasn't losing money in like the future. It was something in the past that happened. So for example, when I was younger, um, my family lost their house. We, um, I was like eight years old. We had to move from LA to Texas because the recession hit. And I basically, you know, lost all my friends and money was really tough. And I realized like, because I grew up in that environment, now that I'm older, I'm still holding on to those memories. And I'm not actually afraid of like the future. I'm actually afraid of something in the past repeating. Most often than not, it's your anxiety talking. If you're afraid to take a break, ask yourself why. And then ask yourself if it's something that's actually gonna happen or if you're just afraid of the past. Yeah, I know. You didn't expect to click on a YouTube video and get all therapisty. Well, that's the vibe on the JDarma Wongza channel. <laughs> The next thing I wish I knew was to make a hundred videos before judging yourself. Guys, I know it's so easy to like make a video, spend 10 hours editing it, filming it, uploading it, and then you're like, Whoa, there's no views on it. If that's your 10th video, do not judge yourself and make another video. Because it's like, if you haven't made a hundred YouTube videos on your channel, shut the fuck up. Because like, you really just want to get in a habit of like learning in the first few videos. Like you don't want to think about optimizing. So that actually goes into the sponsor of today's video and someone I work with dearly, vidIQ. vidIQ is the best tool for any creator to get started. vidIQ has a daily idea generation tool that basically generates daily YouTube ideas using powerful AI. And if you're someone that's struggling to get up to 100 videos and uploading, then use daily ideas. For example, I have no idea what to make this week, so I literally used daily ideas, was searching through some of the ideas. Some of them were bad, some of them were amazing, and I found one that was like, holy shit, I'm gonna make this video. And that's why this video title is what you see today. VidIQ has other tools as well, such as keyword research, so your titles get as many views as possible. It helps you compare thumbnails to make sure your videos stand out. So go check out vidIQ today and sign up using my link in the description. You guys know that I've worked with VidIQ for actually almost a year now. My face is on the website, so I truly stand by them and you should check them out. Also, let me know if you guys like this chit chat, get ready with me video. I was like watching YouTuber Michelle Fawn make this video recently of like her just doing makeup and talking about like anti-work. And I was like, oh my God, like this is so fun. I want to do the same. So let me know in the comments or give this video a thumbs up if you like the vibe. All right, the next thing I wish I knew before starting a YouTube channel is to watch YouTubers that are small. I know this is like kind of weird, but like I think so often, which, you know, it's not a bad thing. We can watch like Mr. Beast and like Eric and like really big YouTubers. And we just sit there and look at their view count and be like, God damn it, like why am I not like them? Learning from the best is important, but it's not good for your mental health. I think it's so important not to watch YouTubers with just viral content, but people that have been here for like 10 years. For example, Michelle Fawn. You know, she's been making content since like 28, 2008. Her content strategy is just super interesting to me. And I watch her because I don't always want to watch the Mr. Beasts where they chase trends. And you know, that can get me in the loop of like not thinking long-term. And especially if you're starting out and you're smaller, like make sure you're purposely, consciously watching people that are like veterans or people that maybe have quote unquote, like slower, the long-term growth. There's this quote, it's like, the five people you surround yourself is who you become. But it's also like, if you watch only people that make viral content, you're gonna only make content for viewers, right? And like virality, and that might not be what you want. So you might wanna shake it up, add some variety, and like watch a bunch of other creators that maybe don't have like the most amount of views, but you like their style. All right, so the last thing I wish I knew is, um, you need to build security in yourself, not in the numbers. I know like everyone is like, don't care about views, be patient. That shit's hard. Like, 
I think all of us are human and we find self-worth in the way people think about us and how many people love us. You know, my advice to that is like, find a way to find self-worth beyond a view count or how much money you make. Basically this girl on TikTok I found was like, oh, oh fuck, I fucked up my eyeliner. No. But whatever. So I was watching this TikTok the other day and there's this girl that was basically like, I am a sugar baby and I have a sugar daddy and I make like 10K a month. And she was saying how like she was making all this money and she really just did it because she wanted financial security. And she started to make 10K a month, 20, $30,000. And she realized there was no amount of money, you know, $30,000 is a lot, right? But like for her, there was no amount of money that would make her feel more secure because the more amount of money she had, she actually felt like she had more to lose. And it was just such an interesting perspective of like money and like what we're really going after because like I used to think that when I have five thousand dollars in my bank account, I'm secure. Now it's like ten thousand. Now it's twenty thousand, a hundred. Like it doesn't matter. I realized like even for me, I was struggling to like find security in myself. You know, like I can handle things. If money is ever an issue, I'll figure it out. But it's just really important to figure it out and ask yourself, like, what are you really striving towards? And how do you define your value outside the numbers? I don't think it's bad to be very um, proud of your accomplishments and find confidence in what you've done. But don't let that just be the only thing. I just want to let you know, this is the hardest thing to do. <laughs> Doing your eyeliner and making a YouTube video is fucking so hard. But I don't think I did a shabby job. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit of something. I'm gonna start to upload a lot more content, so if you like this video, subscribe. Um, I know in the past few months I was kind of inactive. Honestly, I was just in my head. I was like so focused on like getting the most viral video and I forgot of like how to make a video and just sit down and talk. So if you're watching this video right now and you got this far, thank you so, so much. I love you guys so much. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. Um, I love you guys so much. I hope you guys like my makeup look. And I'll see you guys in the next one.